Hello, I'm Persia. And I'm Joey. And you are watching the first ever Addictive Daughter Skype Nuggets um, between us and the lovely Louise Androlia. Uh, oh. Hello, Louise. Hello. <laughs> so Louise is a self-empowerment coach and a tarot reader, and she works one-on-one -on -one and via group, and she essentially helps her clients um, reclaim their personal power and also sort of connect to their mind, body, spirit. And she writes for lots of different uh, publications, online and otherwise. Uh, two of them are The Numinous, check them out, and Mademoiselle Robot. So, Louise, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, very, very well, good. thank you, very well. So, we know that you're kind of big into the energy stuff, and a lot of your work is around that. And our first question, really, is how did you get into this work? Okay, um, I'm a kind of real belief in holistic living, like, you know, mind, body, spirit connection. My own journey has taken me through a lot of lessons with the mind, the body, and the spirit. But actually, when I was a teenager, I started doing my kind of tarot work and psychic work. And I kind of learned about energy then because I, you know, was connecting and I was just, you know, experimenting. I had books about energy. and it, But it was actually when I first moved to London, um, it was kind of 14, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'd come from a, a kind of countryside town and I arrived in the big city and was really overwhelmed by the energy of the place, you know, having to go on the tube, just being around, you know, Oxford Circus, you know, mm -hmm. like just lots of people and everything. And I was like, I was feeling kind of anxious and stressed out, drained all the time. And I was like, what am I going to do about this? And I kind of suddenly remembered all these kind of energy techniques that I'd used, you know, when I'd been younger, just for my own kind of spiritual development. And was like, this is what I need to put into play. And it's actually kind of what's become, you know, real kind of grounding root to the lessons that I teach others. Because I believe if we have that kind of energy awareness, then immediately we've connected, you know, our mind, body, spirit, and we can feel better. So it's yeah, a big yeah. kind of nerdy thing I like to teach people. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, on that note, we've got a big energy dilemma ourselves. Um, not hey. so long ago, we found ourselves in a business meeting with a really, um, a lovely person, but they were very chaotic. And I mean, Joey and I can talk a mile a minute, in case you hadn't noticed. Um, but we couldn't get a word in edgeways. And we literally sat there just like with blank expressions on our faces. I actually went and hit in the toilet yeah, a couple of she times. She kept leaving me. I just thought <laughs> she'd deal with it on my own. <laughs> and it was just a really odd situation because, like we said, she was a lovely, lovely girl, but she was very frantic. And it almost felt like we were having this meeting in a different language. She used loads of just like, she, it was like she was talking in riddles. Yeah. It was just all very convoluted and hectic. And yeah, it was weird. And when we came out of the meeting, we both sort of stood on the street and said, my God, we feel really odd. Mm. And we had a kind of few minutes silence. We were like, I don't know how to I'll shake this you right now. Yeah, yeah. It's too much. How, um, how do you deal with that? Well, I think that's a really good example of an energetic situation. And the first thing really to think about is just actually having an awareness of what energy is, because I think it's a word that gets thrown around or just using a spiritual concept or, you know, and has bad energy but no one actually really knows what they're talking about when they're saying energy sometimes so I think it's actually having a practical knowledge so you know when I think of energy you know everything's made of energy we're made of energy you know it's all around us it's invisible and I always say it's contagious because you know you can pick up energy from someone else you know like your experience you kind of really aware of her energy it happens if we've got you know someone who's talking very negatively or even if you're just in you know a cramped tube train you're picking up vibes off everyone else as it were vibes um so really the, the best way to think of it is just that you've got an energetic space as well as your own physical body i like to think of it as being kind of a sphere that's around you you know perhaps up to a few feet in all directions and that space holds all of your thoughts and feelings and they're kind of just, I just think of them as kind of dancing around you, right? So, you know, in regards to your experience, what you've got is, you know, somebody with their own, you know, and this is where I think we bring in compassion because we recognize if our space is whole, it really depends on our own personal experience and what's going on with us, right? So with, your, the, with the person you're having the meeting with, she obviously was quite scattered to be giving out that kind of, you know, conversation, so perhaps, you know, she's having trouble with her own thoughts. She had like, maybe she even just had a really chaotic week before, you know, or perhaps even maybe she doesn't even, I don't know, maybe she doesn't have a lot of friends to connect to or something, you know, because she, she kind of suddenly just like threw everything out, you know, but it's kind of thinking, okay, it's all in relation to what, what we're going through. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, it's, it's around us, you know, and so I think, okay, 
we need to be aware of it purely so we can nurture and protect our own energy because mm -hmm. I think we have enough thoughts and feelings of our own I certainly do I don't want to carry anyone else's because it's going to be you know it's not going to make me feel good mm -hmm. so it's that awareness that is kind of the first step I think brilliant, brilliant. so what are some other tools that when, once we have the awareness we yeah. also have compassion for whoever's energy we are kind of feeling yeah. what are a couple of other tools that we could use to help us protect or clear our energy okay so clearing is like when you've and what i was just saying about having that awareness the first thing when you are actually about to think okay how can i kind of get rid of energy that i've mm -hmm. picked up whether it's from a meeting a client a friend a family member or even just a stranger and you feel like you've come home carrying stuff right is just, you know, recognizing your body first, actually getting a little bit of kind of feeling a way through what it feels like when you've collected energy from someone. Mm -hmm. I always say the best way is just to think of the different types of tiredness you have, because mm -hmm. I think we have a sleepy tiredness, we have a kind of exhausted from work tiredness, but then we also have an energetic tiredness, which we would say is when we feel drained, right? Yeah. You feel like low, you know, mm -hmm. it's almost like you can feel like you're sinking into the ground in a kind of negative way, yeah. 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 It's kind of being like, okay, because sometimes, you know, I come home and I may be feeling a bit tired or a bit anxious or something, yeah. I always kind of shake around a bit in my body and check where my feelings have come from, mm -hmm. and I'll be like, okay, am I, have I carried some energy home with me from the clients I've just mm -hmm. seen, and mm -hmm. so it's actually getting, you know, and that's where it really helps to just work with your own mind and body, so you can actually just feel, you know, get used to it, and it's kind of a practice, you know, perhaps noticing how you feel when you spent certain time with a person the same way you know if you spend time with your kind of most uplifting friends you feel that kind of brighter yeah. spark yeah. energy right mm -hmm. so that I'd say is like really the kind of you know main thing you know just so you actually know when you pick something up mm -hmm. right and it, it all immediately heightens your mind body spirit connection because you're just aware mm -hmm. and so then I'd say there's there's two ways to clear yourself when you've taken on energy I like to do a breathing exercise mm -hmm. and visualization so, you know, your intention when you're clearing your energy is just to kind of release anything that isn't kind of for the highest good or isn't mm -hmm. your energy, right? You don't want to be carrying something. Even if it's from your closest friend, like you two, even though you're kind of best friends, you still don't want to carry each other's stuff mm -hmm. because it makes you then less able to support each other if you're kind of, you know, merging your energy together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a breathing exercise that I'll get you to do. I personally like the breathing exercise the most because I think it can really just shift back into the present moment, shift you back into a body, blast everything away. Mm -hmm. So if you just actually, you know, it's kind of closing your eyes and just visualizing the space around you and kind of mm -hmm. thinking of it as maybe, you know, a bit dusty and dirty. You can also do this for, even if you've got loads of negative thoughts, if you're just not feeling well, because the idea is you're just blasting everything you don't want off, mm -hmm. okay? So I'll kind of guide you through it. And I'd say put both hands on your solar plexus, which mm -hmm. is just that dip at the top in between your ribs. And you kind of just, you know, just gather, almost gather everything you don't want <laughs> together, whether it's thoughts, feelings, you know, the energy you've picked up from that person. And you're going to blast it off. I like the breathing exercise to be quite apocalyptic, you know, as if you're literally mm -hmm. sending this energy. Yeah, sending this energy, you know, it's going, right? Mm -hmm. So you take in a deep breath through your nose and then you do a powerful out breath that's like this and that's your blast breath, right? So, and you do it three times and so I'll kind of guide you through it now. So hands there and deep breath through your nose and then blast breath. Okay, another time. Yeah, and then one more time. Okay. Ooh. I, I find that it like immediately pets you up. It's actually mm. real peppage right there. Yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, it, I sometimes do it just in the morning or any time. Even if I feel tired, even if it's not an energy thing, I'm just yeah. like I just need to because I think it's quite. It I feel like it pops you back into your body. Yeah, yeah. it really yeah. does. And it kind of just, you know, brings you back into a space. So that's a really great one to do after a situation like that. I often do it, you see, I always do it between clients. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if I'm in, you know, like Persia was saying, she's was running off to the bathroom. Sometimes if I'm in a situation where I feel energetically very kind of, you know, overwhelmed, I will go and do that exercise yeah. in the bathroom. Yeah, right? they'll, I'm never like, know. they'll never know. Yeah, I might like, run off on breathing out and just mm -hmm. try gaining yourself so that you can actually because of course when that happens you mm -hmm. feel probably like you did you couldn't even take part in a meeting because mm -hmm. you were kind of gone off into this weird space yeah exactly you know? brilliant okay so what's the next tool 
Uh, next tool would be visualizations. Um, if you're someone that's not comfortable with doing visualizations, energetically, I just think we know energy is invisible. So why not work with it invisibly? To me, that just, you know, it's just a way to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So again, you're thinking of this space being kind of dusty, a bit cluttered. With people, we often connect via kind of little strings, cords mm -hmm. to there. Sometimes, you know, it can be a really big one when you feel like you've got a real connection, you know, maybe an, an ex-partner or something. Mm -hmm. Even just friends, like you guys probably have cords between you because you spend so much time together. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the idea is that you always, again, your intention is that you want your energy space to be clear and bright so that you can feel your healthiest, you can be the best friend, the best, you know, partner. Sometimes I have people saying to me, oh, but don't you want to be connected to your nearest and dearest? Well, I will actually, no, you don't, because if you're not connected, it means you can give them better support, mm. you know, especially as, as, you know, like you guys, when you're seeing clients, if you're actually absorbing everything mm. from your clients, yeah. you won't actually be as clear a kind of channel and yeah. space yeah. to help people, yeah. because, yeah. you know, and it's like even with your friends, if they're crying and you start crying, you're not useful, right? Yeah. You, you, actually need to be, you need to be in your, you know, beautiful energy space. Mm -hmm. So really good visualization, again, and this is great if you're doing any kind of tarot reading or psychic work as well, or even just after your spiritual practice to kind of clear your space. I like to just visualize you're under a really powerful waterfall. Mm. It's just that the waters are coming down over your head and just like, just cutting everything off, just mm -hmm. literally clearing your space. You can also do it with a light, like a bright white light, kind of bathe in it. I always like the waterfalls, I think, you know, mm -hmm. It's really easy to imagine that kind of, again, that blasting. Mm -hmm. And another visualization you can do is kind of visualize scissors and kind of snip these little cords around you almost, you know, or, or a knife or a sword or, you know, I know some cord cutting visualizations are kind of taking a sword to this connection. Mm -hmm. And then from that, you know, just after you've done clearing, you always want to re-protect your space to kind of re-energize yourself. So again, thinking that you've got this sphere around you, I like to just pop a kind of invisible bubble around it right so a bubble or an egg or you know something that you deem as protective because it's yeah. all based on your intention mm -hmm. to be safe really i think of this as your kind of psychic immune system mm -hmm. looking after your energy and yeah and then you're kind of good to go good to go amazing so let's just recap on that so the first thing is to become aware of your energy yeah. The second thing, actually compassion. I really like that mm. idea. So having compassion for the other person instead of judging them. The yeah. third thing was the three breaths. Yeah. The fourth thing was visualization. Um, visualization. Well, there, there was two, wasn't there? So the first one was the waterfall. Yeah. And then um, the fifth one was the scissors. And then the sixth one to protect your energy was le bubble. Yeah, Do you know what that reminds yourself. me of? Have you seen, I think it's a Leonardo da Vinci picture of a, a human being in a, in a <laughs> sphere. The Vitruvian man, maybe, oh, yeah. with his name. Yeah, that. da Vinci case. It's like that then, it's like the energy around you. Is That's like what that. I think, you know, you yeah. think of yourself, you're in this sphere. And actually, even just now, if you have that, you know, that slight shift in your awareness and you leave your home yeah. and you actually yeah. think of yourself as, as bigger than just the physical body, mm -hmm. you immediately yeah. become more aware. You mm -hmm. become, you know, when you're on the tube, the bus, you know, you're suddenly like, oh, how easy is it to just be blending this with, you know, everything? And actually, that's why I like to talk about it in a really practical way mm -hmm. is because I think the best place to be using these exercises is in the office after the day, you know, mm -hmm. shopping in the centre of town, like, mm -hmm. you know, at, after you've been to a party, anywhere where you're after just around. After a first date. Yeah, after a <laughs> first date, yeah. yeah. Amazing. This has been so wonderful, Louise. We know we're going to be doing more of these with you in the future. Um, could you tell us or our audience where they can find you. Okay, um, you can find everything about me on louiseandrolia.com and you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lunaverse and then Facebook forward slash Louise Androlia. It's all on my website though. There's a good ramble about me and what I do and you can come and say hello now. Amazing. Louise, thank you so much. It's been really, really interesting listening to all this energy shizzle and we will definitely be trying it. Mm -hmm. over the course of the day to kind of reconnect so thank you you're welcome thank you speak to you soon oh, bye if you'd like a life nugget and a weekly dose of happiness and motivation straight to your inbox sign up at addictivedaughter.com and join us and thousands of others in getting addicted to the good stuff today